I was lucky enough to take a quick trip to Spain on vacation, and I found this awesome pen shop in Toledo. Toledo is a cool city with a long history of being a fortress, and it even has a history of having good steel for sword making, so it was a lot of fun to travel through. I really didn't expect to find a stationary shop or a pen shop, but once I saw it, I just had to go in and unexpectedly found something in my price point. In this video, I will unbox and review the Faber-Castell Hexo fountain pen. Hi, I'm Scott. I help people with journaling because I believe that writing down your experiences is the key to mental health. And once you get your mental health centered, focus, productivity, and mindfulness is a sustainable way of life. To help with your journaling journey, please subscribe and watch more of my videos. There's lots of good information on how to get started, how to maintain your practice. Also, I have an affiliate link in the description of this video for the Hexo fountain pen. If you're going to buy this as a gift or buy this for yourself, please shop with my links so that I get a few pennies to cover my cost in making these videos. If you've seen my videos in the past, you know that I'm a fan of inexpensive journaling supplies. But occasionally I do like to spend a little bit on fountain pens. My budget is typically under $50. Looks like we have a nice gift box. Gift box nice and clean. Oh, and there's the pen. Very nice. It is called the Hexo because it does have a hexagon. It is a hexagon. Oh, and there's the jousting, the jousting fellows on the on the lid. Most of the Faber Castells that I have are just like that. And it has a nice uh Faber Castell black there. That's pretty sweet. The sticker. Exo fountain pen. Made in Slovenia. Check it out. I may have to get up Google Maps. Where Slovenia? Is that like near Austria or something? That's awesome. Has a nice clip. Nice stiff clip. Wow. Super stiff clip. Very nice. Clips and closes nicely. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look at that. It makes it so you have to close the lid on the straight edge. There's something in the something in the lid there. That's pretty sweet. What a nice detail. So you can't put the lid on crooked. Sweet. That is a nice pen. Oh, this is translucent. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but this is translucent um, a barrel there. The nib looks good. If I want to nice and soft, I do have another Faber Castell, and the and the the nibs are just kind of sweet. Let me crack this thing open. See what packing supplies. Okay, so there's a cartridge in there. Let that roll away, and then some packing supplies. They just use another cartridge. What that does is it tells me that I can use one cartridge and keep another cartridge in the barrel for for the next one, so I don't have to worry about it too much. This is just a standard cartridge, uh, nothing special, not like a Lamy or anything like that. It's just your normal. I think they call them international or universal uh, cartridge ink cartridge. You can buy them. Even an Amazon Basic has has these kind of cartridges. So we'll put it in there. You should hear a little click. There's a ball bearing right there. Hear a little click. Oh, there it is. Very nice. Put the lid back on. Oh, that seals nice. Oh, there's like a little click in there too. Nice. So this isn't something that you just, you know, tighten to do finger tight. This one actually clips closed. You can kind of, you can kind of feel it clip close. That's sweet. It's nice and lightweight. It is uh, kind of an aluminum uh, aluminum anodized or some kind of aluminum coating. Uh, so it is nice and lightweight, but it's plastic on the inside. Let's see how, look at that. Same thing. You can't, you can't uh, post it crooked. You have to post it on this. These are like little details. German made. This is a nice <laughs> German made brand. Uh, Faber-Castell is how you say it in uh, English, but uh, in German, I think it's pronounced some other way. Let's see if we can get some ink flow in, the, in this. Sometimes it takes a minute to... There it is. Sometimes it takes a minute to get going. There we go. Ooh, a nice blue. Very good. Let's see. Smash the like button. Writes really well. 
I mean, it's so smooth. This paper is really thick, like good, like fountain pen paper. Uh, I wonder how it does. I also have this, uh, this little journal. I talked to the man that sold to me, such a cool guy. He uh, broke out and spoke English for me in, in Toledo. He clearly spoke Spanish. But as I told him that I was a journaler, he, he said, hey, here, have this too. So yeah, let's crack this one open too and see what we're going to get out of that. I don't know. It's a little pocket, a little pocket book. I, I kind of like that. I always try to carry one with me. Let's see what kind of paper we got here. Oh, it's got kind of like a bamboo cover. That's nice. Nice. Paper's good. It's just plain paper. That's, that's okay. Be good for drawing. I wonder how thin it is. How's it going to do with my, uh, with my fountain pen? Bleeding is always a problem with a fountain pen that just gushes ink. So let's see. Subscribe and like this video. Let's see if there's a big difference in the. No, it's solid. It does have some variation. I can see it kind of get thicker. If I press, I can get a thicker line than, than if I just use it lightly. Most of my writing is, I don't press like that. I just do really light writing. Oftentimes they'll do this to kind of show the line variance and how fast. It does look like it. the ink comes out nice and smooth and it doesn't glob out, which is really good. I had a Faber-Castell loon and you know, the, the nib was so um, soft that it seemed like it just globbed out on me. But yeah, this is really good. Let's see how this paper is. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about on that bleeding. So you get some bleeding through there. This paper doesn't bleed. Let me try another journal. This is my daily uh, writer. I've got a whole bunch of, I usually use a, uh, I usually use a Sharpie gel pen or something like that on this one. Cause last time I used an, uh, a fountain pen on it. Let me go back. Yeah. You can see where I used a fountain pen and it just, I mean, it's unbearable. And then I had an explosion on my fountain pen. That was miserable, but fortunately it wasn't during the middle of the day or during a meeting or something. All right, let's go on this one. I always turn it sideways. Is this going to bleed? I think it's called ghosting. Not too bad. Not too bad. This is a moleskin. Um, let me close it. This is a moleskin journal. I found these for, uh, it's like a barrister or something. I found this for, I think there was a pack of five and I found it for $4 at TJ Maxx or something, or it, it was on clearance. So you know how I am about my journaling supplies. I like them cheap. So I don't really like the moleskin paper. Uh, it's a little, it's something like it's toothy. It's thin. It's really thin and toothy. So, uh, you know, I like something a little bit more like the composition notebooks and they have really good composition notebooks are probably my favorite daily journal without a doubt. Okay. So that's good. The pen review is, this is a solid, such a nice clean pen where I wrote on a couple of different types of paper, um, easy together. It has a little snap to close it. That's just so nice. Um, the ink cartridge goes in. You can store an extra ink cartridge in there. All right, but it takes a converter. That's fine too. But an ink cartridge is fine for me. Um, it's clean. I'll probably take that sticker off. It, this is a cool little feature that it won't let you close it unless the facets are right in line with each other. It's a nice pen. This is like a daily carry. Um, other than, you know, just normal fountain pen ink bleeds through paper, I would say that this could be easily be a daily writer if you used a composition notebook. Very nice. Thank you. Once again, my preference is to use inexpensive journaling supplies. I'm really more about the journey than I am the, the equipment, but I do enjoy using cool tools. If you are interested in some cool tools, I have lots of links in the description, so please check them out. Okay, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.